gather us in, ground us in you. Gather us in, ground us in you. Gather us in, gather us in, ground us, ground us in you. Good morning, everyone. It's Reverend Natalie uh, serving Knoll United Church and St. Paul's United Church on the North Knoll Road. I bring you greetings this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's Sunday morning, March the 29th, and just as we always do indeed whenever we come before the sacredness and the love of our God, we extend a very warm welcome uh, to each and every one of you, and it is my, um, my prayer that as we come before uh, the sacredness of our God, that we may, each and every one of us, feel a sense of God's love and God's peace, and also a sense of community, even though we are not physically together this morning, but of course, on a very deep and spiritual level, we are all connected as brothers and sisters in Christ. I invite us just to take a moment as we come before the love of our God this morning to pause and to open up our hearts to the goodness and to the grace of Jesus with the lighting of the Christ candle. Lord Jesus, come, come and uh, dwell within our beings. Lord Jesus, come into our homes, come into our communities, come into our provinces, come into our country, and indeed, Lord Jesus, come throughout the whole of the world. Bring your light in this time of darkness. Amen. Uh, throughout the service, as uh, we pray together this morning and hear Holy Scripture and uh, hear music, there will be uh, prayers that I will be praying aloud. And I invite you, the prayers are actually printed uh, on the Facebook page. And I invite you, if you so desire, to, uh, to follow along as I pray those prayers. You can pray them aloud with me or you can pray them uh, within the silence of your heart and your mind. Together, let us pray. Send the waters of your grace upon us. We are your people. Let the waters of your love be present here with us. Let the waters of your blessing pour over us. Faithful God, you called all creatures into being, and you care for each one. Send your grace upon your people throughout the whole of the world, that we may follow your ways of truth and walk in the paths of steadfast love, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Again, as with uh, last weekend, while I realize that obviously we are not uh, together uh, in a church uh, building, I invite you to follow along if you wish as we uh, pray together uh, the Lenten Candle Liturgy. While we are not gathered together face to face as brothers and sisters in Christ, we are connected. So we are here together in a sacred place. It is a place of refuge and it is a place of protection. This holy connection is a sacred space. The season of Lent is a kind of sanctuary extended in time. And one of the things that Lent teaches 
is that you too are a sanctuary. There is inside of you a place for sacred things, a place where God abides. As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and the pain in the world today. Let us pray. Loving God, we open our hearts to you. We invite you into our inmost being only to find you already there. Strengthen us in our quiet places and then lead us into the work of peace and into healing throughout the whole of the world. Amen. Isabel is going to uh, play a tune for us. Um, on the fiddle now. Post it on the uh, Facebook page of the Common uh, Lectionary Readings uh, for today, uh, Sunday, March the 29th. Um, I'm only going to share one of those readings with you uh, from the Old Testament. It's Ezekiel chapter, or verse, uh, chapter rather, 37, uh, verses 1 through to 14, and Psalm 130, uh, and then Romans chapter 8, uh, verses 6 through to 8. Um, I'm going to share with you the Gospel lesson, though, uh, reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, um, according to John. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister, Martha. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you are going back? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, 
but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Then Thomas said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and he is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and she went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and she said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing there, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, 
believed in him. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Daly is going to play a piece of music on um, the piano. Uh, he's actually in another room uh, in our home. And so uh, I think he's ready to play. Is Daly ready to play? I think he's ready to play. actually um, offering our praises to God this morning uh, from our dining room in our home and our piano is located in the family room and that's why we had to kind of move ourselves into the family room um, so that Daly uh, could play um, the tune that he played for you on the piano. You only saw his hands because he's still in his PJs and he actually played the piano on the Facebook page uh, just the other day and he chose to do it that exact same way because he yet again was well, he was still in his PJs. So I just want to, I want to thank both of my kids for um, helping me out here this morning and offering their uh, gifts of music and I've hired them as employees uh, to give me a hand. So I just bless them and thank them both very, very much. Um, Isabel is going to play um, another little tune for you on uh, the fiddle. I've met a lot of people throughout my life thus far. I have met a lot of people who are filled with hope. Do you know what I mean? People who are just oozing with the love of God and people are just oozing with happiness. It just seems that absolutely nothing ever gets them down in life. And if it does, they are able to lift themselves up again ever so quickly. I've also met a lot of people who, who say that they have no hope. You know, those people who are, are living in the valleys of life and they are living in a really, really dark place and they cannot see the light and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. And they say that they could never, ever, no matter what, they could never find hope. The gospel lesson that we heard together this morning from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, it's that familiar story. I'm sure it's a story that many of us have heard throughout our lives thus far um, over and over again. It's the story of the raising of Lazarus. Mary and Martha call for Jesus. They are Lazarus' sisters. 
They call for Jesus because Lazarus is not well. But by the time he arrives, Lazarus has died. Martha comes to Jesus pleading, if only you had been here, this would not have happened. And then, of course, later we hear Mary saying similar things. Lord, Messiah, if only you had come sooner, our brother would not have died. In those moments, they had no hope. And then Jesus changed everything. Jesus changed everything for them like he always did and like he always does. Jesus always, always brings us hope. Do you know something in the course of the last number of days, midst all that is going on throughout the whole of the world and, and on a very personal level within our own province and our own communities, Jesus is bringing hope. I have seen signs of it. I'm sure that you too have seen signs of it. We have heard of, of stories. We have read of stories as well. Stories on the news, stories on the radio, stories in newspapers, stories on social media, where people are taking their hearts and reaching out to the whole of humanity, if you will, sharing love and sharing peace, sharing hope with whomever they have the opportunity to do so. Jesus is bringing light into the darkness. And of course, within that, we are reminded of the presence of God within our lives. And we are reminded too of our call as brothers and sisters in Christ to live in love and to live in hope. I know that uh, many of us are already doing that. And I just invite us in this time to love one another, to love one another in whatever way that we can, and to love one another in whatever way that we can, as much as we can, from inside of our homes and from within our hearts. Let us bring to one another the message of hope, the hope that we heard in the gospel that was spoken through the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John this morning, that hope that continues to live on forever and ever. Amen. I want to remind folks, although it is printed on the Facebook page, if, if you know of anyone that is not able to connect to uh, Facebook, um, please let me know and I am very happy to uh, forward to them either by texting or by email any of the prayers that were prayed uh, together this morning, uh, the video um, that um, is on the Facebook page. I am very happy to do both of those or, or one of those, whatever folk um, would wish. Um, I also invite you, in addition, there is another link on the Facebook page. It's a link um, to uh, Reverend Richard Bott's um, service of praise this morning on Sunday, March the 29th, the moderator of the United Church of Canada. And if you so desire, you can gather around um, worship uh, with Reverend Bott. Um, Isabel is going to uh, play uh, one more piece for us and then we will gather together for a benediction.
Bless you and thank you to Isabel. Um, some of you, um, you weren't imagining it. If a little earlier you um, could hear a dog barking, it was actually um, my greyhound Jordan uh, that was barking. So you weren't losing it. If you thought, hmm, was that a dog barking as uh, Natalie was, uh, I don't even remember what part of the service we were in at that stage. He really wants to come to church. And so that's why he was barking. Um, I, I just want to offer you um, uh, the light and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, today. I know that this is a time of uncertainty for so many of us. I know that um, it is a time that is uh, very confusing for so many of us. And I know that uh, there are many of us that have an abundance of questions. Uh, turn to God. I've been saying that all week as I've been speaking with folk on the phone and texting and sending emails and doing uh, video messages on the Facebook page. Turn to God. God is always there for us. And the exact same way Jesus um, uh, spread his love and his hope uh, to Mary and Martha in the gospel lesson this morning, he will do the exact same thing for us and he will do the exact same thing for the world. He has done it over and over and over again. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you this day and always. Amen. <laughs>